with your life as it is now, you have a desire to know God the more. Your greatest heart desire here on earth is to make money, I mean to really make money. And the essence of it is you want to make money not to spend on yourself, not to have a very nice car or a nice house. You want to make money to sponsor the gospel. Now, I hope you got my time. Think again. Now, don't take this invitation because it is attractive. Because it, it can lure you. Don't be lured by it. Take it because God is talking. God wants to make you a millionaire. On Friday, unto the Lord, in spirit and truth. Exodus, the 20th chapter. I'll have a series of scriptures to read this morning as the foundation scriptures and I'd like you to pay particular attention I might speak for a very short time very brief because we've got so much to do this morning Exodus 20 verse 1 and God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt bow down thyself, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. The totality of all that is to worship. Thou shalt not Bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Praise the Lord. This is Moses speaking the word of the Lord after he had come down from Mount Sinai just immediately after. A similar scripture of this kind is found in the New Testament. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Like to begin from the 16th verse, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven 
against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that they may know they may be known sorry because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God had showed it unto them for the invisible things of God for the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made the invisible things are understood by the things that are seen that are made even his eternal power and Godhead can be seen in the things that are made so that they are without excuse everybody is without excuse for not worshiping God because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful that became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. God said, do not make creeping images of anything in of the likeness of anything in heaven or on earth or underneath the earth. Be careful about that. And here he is talking about it in in so many words, verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man on earth and to birds in heaven and four-footed beasts on earth and creeping things both on earth and underneath the earth. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie take note now take note now and worship he said you shouldn't worship or serve any other God and worship and serve the creator more than the creator and worship and serve the creator more than the creator who is blessed forever everybody say thank you and for this cause god gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use their natural use into that which is against nature now at this point the Bible is talking about sex. I know some people with weird gooly baloo eerie thinking. Don't want to hear about sex in church. When you say sex on the pulpit they say oh is vulgar you're wrong no book talks about sex like the bible the god that made it talk about it here the bible said that women who have forsaken the worship of the true god service to the true god have turned the natural sex life into something weird now we may not have had it so much in this part of the world but we've seen it is coming gradually yeah it's, it, it, it is coming when you go to uh, girls secondary schools you hear them call darling you're my darling you're my sweetheart and and you think it just is that they sleep on the same bed and both of them girls uh, romantically cloud their bodies until they arouse their feelings and with their hands do what a man should do to them in their private parts. 
a girl in ABU happened to die because she was so lustful about a man and didn't get one. And so she used a candle that broke in inside her. It's terrible. You know what I'm talking about? I bet you do. Because they would not worship God. God gave them up to vile affections. It is worse in developed countries. When you see an old lady whose husband is dead having a dog that she doesn't want anybody to touch, something is happening behind the curtains you don't know. The dog is her husband. They say, oh my God, the Bible talks about it. The Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hethites, the Jebusites, the Hevites, and all of them were doing that. Sleeping with animals. A woman is made for a man, not for a dog. God made them Adam and Eve. A man is made for a woman, not a man for man. God made them Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Look at verse 27. Likewise also, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now that is a terrible word to use. Reprobate mind, which means God kept them up to have minds like animals. Now this is where biology has lied. He said that man is an animal. The Bible classifies man higher than animals. He said when a man or woman stops worshipping the true God, the person will begin to wander in his imaginations and begin to do weird things until it will get to the point where they will intentionally remove the knowledge of God from their minds, from their minds, and God will give them up to reprobate mind. And they'll begin to think like animals. You know a dog doesn't know his mother, or his wife, or his sister. As far as a male dog is concerned, female dog is female dog. Even if it is the mother that gave birth to him. As soon as he gets to mature state, he can sleep with any dog, he sleeps with his mother, they produce again. The same thing with a cat, the same thing with any animal. And God gave them up to have minds like animals. One of the greatest problems in America when I was there, and I was look, listening to television, reading papers, one of the greatest problems in America is the crime called incest. Incest has to do with father sleeping with his own daughter. Forcing her. It's a common thing and one day I was watching the television when so many fa fathers that have done it to their daughters were, were shown on television and they, they were, uh, they, you know, they are crazy. They, they are not even ashamed of what they did. They, they came and, and the, the, the lady who was conducting the program will ask them why they did it. They say, I don't know. I don't know. And some of them, they ask, if you have a chance again, will you do it? Some said yes. But 
mothers also do it to their sons. Force them to bed. Your own daughter. And one got his daughter pregnant. And she gave birth. Tell me what is the son to the father? Is he father or grandfather? What will that child call the man? It's all right, we know what he will call the, the, the lady, mother. What will the child call the man? And what will the, why, the, the, the woman, the mother, tell the child to call the man? For if he says father, she will beat him and say, call him grandfather. When the child grows up and says, where is my grandfather? Who is your father, mommy? What does the woman say? Say, is your father? Or is your grandfather? When you hear about America, you are in a hurry to go there. The Lord opened big way for you. Uh, if you think this is horrible, let's read a little bit more. Because it's not, it's not that bad. We're talking about worship, remember. Ministering unto the Lord. We have to start from the right foot. Let's read 27 again. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman born in their lust one toward another, men with men, walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was made. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, mal maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. Now take note of the next. Inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things. Are you surprised people are inventing atomic bombs just to wipe away people? It comes from here. Inventors of evil things. Now take note. Disobedient to parents. I hope children in this church are listening. When I say children, don't look at those little bitty kids over there. They're children, all right. Every one of you is a child. I'm sure everybody here has one parent living at least. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. I don't know how many of you have gone into covenant with the, with the lady, you that are men, you say, I'm going to marry you. I tell you, I'm going, nothing stop. I, look, let's cut our blood and show. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. These people don't, 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 don't go for what is natural. They have they've been twisted. They, they go for something that is out of the normal. You understand what I'm talking about? I remember when I was in secondary school, I didn't understand about homosexuality, you know, you know homosexual life and so on, in my secondary school. And I, I was the, the best footballer. Now, no credit, no credit to me in any sense. But I was the smallest also. I mean, I could just, I could just play ball as if I was talking to ball. I went to school and did everything because of football. Now, you know, if you play some football, it, on training, one side of the team will have to undress, remove the shirt, and the other put on. Yeah, I'm sure those of you that play ball know that. As long as it's not a football match, you know. You know. 
And uh, when I was the younger, I, I was uh, plumpy a little bit. Had had much weight than what I have now. And I looked smooth, you know. Nice. And I had this uh, teacher, a coach, you know. And that day we were supposed to pull our side. And I get excited because I, I like playing without shirt. I sweat a lot. So it's better for me without shirt than with shirt. And so when I pulled my dress, we were playing and we played so well. And I, I mean, you know. So I, I ran before him and he looked at me and said, Oh, Philip, you have a nice body. He said, Your body is like a woman's body. And I didn't understand what that meant. But one of my teammates, uh, older than myself, had it. And he, 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 he pretended to be playing and come close to me. He came close to me and he said, He said, I guy like you. If you don't take that, he will sleep with you. At that age, I had never slept with a woman, so I, I, I mean, it was weird. I could understand a man sleeping with a woman, but a man looking for me, I mean, I ran away from that man like a plague. You know, there are some men that women don't, don't excite them. But when they see a man coming, they, they get whoo. All their senses just wake up. If you have that, you need to be delivered. It is deliverance. It is not, it is not, I'm, I'm going to fake it. Come out and be delivered. You have been, you have been oppressed seriously by a demon. When I was in America, there was this uh, area, uh, you know, in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, if you go to New York, you see it too. All, every, almost every city I did. I didn't go to every city, so I can say almost. And in this, city, this, this part of the city, men were homosexuals, you know. And they dress and look like men, uh, women. And, and they talk like women. And, and they swing like women when they walk. And if, if you do not know, honest, if you do not know, you'll think it's a woman. You will just, I mean, they, their body has begun to look like a woman. It was then that I began to make my study about possession. And I began to make a study about body, human body. Your body takes the shape of your spirit. The way you look outside, that is the way your spirit is. That is why when we get to heaven, we will understand one, we will know one another. You won't change. Just as you are now, that's how you will be. Now forget about those who have moustache and beard. There, might, there may not be moustache, there may not be beard. I can't tell much about But I, I believe there will be beard and moustache. I believe that. But you look outside what your spirit looks. Therefore, you see, your body is like a rubber. Your body is like clay. It is formed in the shape of your spirit. If a more wicked spirit, a stronger spirit than your own, than you, should possess you and suppress your spirit and become the dominant spirit, your body will begin to change into the shape of that spirit. We should get it done. Because if you don't, you are in for trouble in this topic. I'm stepping up my teachings. I'm tired of the mediocre level we used to be. I want to step it up this time. And forever, we'll go up. That is why you could see a, your classmate, nice young man in primary school, secondary school, he looks good. But the spirit of drunkenness possesses him and suppresses his own spirit, his, his self. Then you begin to find out that he has changed. And when he snaps picture and sent to you, you say, Kai, how did this man change like this? I mean, he used to look nice. What is this? It's Bacchus. The spirit 
of drunkenness has possessed him and suppressed him. Such people cannot but drink. It's a compulsion. They drag their feet wearing rags and, and they drink. They soon begin to look like the spirit behind drinking. You know, if, if a young lady begins to prostitute, there is, there is, if you walk on the street and you are, you are careful enough, you will know a prostitute without, introduced, without introduction. There is a spirit of prostitution that makes them smell like that. They look prostitutes. That's why God wants to give you His Holy Spirit so it will suppress and dominate you and you will begin to look like God. Think like God, you walk like God. Your hands become the extension of God. Out of his hands come shafts of light. There is the hiding of his power. And your hand will become the extension of God. And the hiding power of God will be in your hand. When you lay it on the sick, it drives out demons and make them well again. Praise God forevermore. Take a look about uh, at, at those masquerades. The people who do the masquerades. After some time, they begin to resemble the masquerade. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The young boy came to me from Calabar. After that, we got him saved from the Olumba Olumba cult. He said to me, one day we were talking, he said, you can't look into Olumba's eye. I said, why? He said, he is something else, so I love. And I said, Olumba can't look into my eye. He said, why? I said, because I'm something else. And then he went on to describe something that, that gave me support. He said, there is not one Olumba. There are about 40 of them. They look alike. That is why if one dies and another takes the place, nobody knows Olumba has died. Because another that resembles him. You see, because they drink of the same spirit. And that spirit has dominated their, their own spirit and therefore gives them almost the same shape of face. So you can hardly tell. Now, let's come home. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Look, a man and a woman get married. They look completely different. A man and a woman. After about 20 years or 30, they look alike. They look alike. Why? Because they, their spirit fuses. They begin to unite, become a unity. So that when you see them after a long time, you will say, ah, now your sister be this. Then you will smile. And you say, why do you say that? Ah, she resembles you too much. So where's my wife? And if you are able to take their picture, when they're married and the progress, you will see the changes that took place. We are talking about husband and wife that are deeply and truly in love. Those that are not deeply and truly in love, they will never resemble. Are you getting my talk now? Praise the Lord. Now let me use this as a... Honestly, I look at Elder Abbasue and his wife, they look, they resemble. They resemble. They resemble. They, there is a similarity. There is, it's as if they, they came from the same house. As if his wife is his younger sister and he married her. When I first met them, I was tempted to ask him, is this your younger sister coming for holiday? There is that beautiful blend about it. Glory be to God forevermore. I didn't know I wasn't the only one that saw you, brother. 
many people here that are echoing it. Hallelujah. Implacable, non-merciful. Verse 32. Who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This, this, this is what Daniel calls. I don't know what you, you call this. Now, you know we're talking about ministry unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm sure you've not forgotten that. I just have to go into some deep things there, which is good for you. Uh, those of you that are visiting, you don't hear this kind of talk anywhere. It's only in Oasis of Love Church. This is where it is. I can't hear you. I'm tired of listening to preachers who don't know why God called them. They read to you the story of Jesus going into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, they finish the clothes, and then they repeat the same thing in other words. Has no application to life, your own life. The way they say it is as if you should buy a donkey and begin to ride it. And if Jesus was in our time, he's not going to ride a donkey. He will look for a Methodist limousine. Come on, give it to me now. What do you think the man is? In, in his time, donkey was the thing top class men ride. So he rode it. Don't think about riding a donkey. Somebody say, well, uh, you know, if Jesus rode a donkey, I'm riding a bicycle, I'm better. Who told you? In fact, the donkey is better than a bicycle. Because you don't do any work on a donkey apart from just tapping your legs and it moves. A bicycle, God help you, you are climbing a hill. Acts, the 13th chapter. Acts, the 13th chapter. Somebody once asked me, he said, I don't know why your church is growing so fast. You came into town lately and is a pastor. In this town. And I looked at him and I smiled. And I said, I know why my church is growing. He said, why? I said, because I don't preach like you people. My preaching is different. And so my pastors. All the pastors preach like me. With just slight changes. Because of their calling. You can't help but be like me. Because I'm the in thing in Joss. You don't belong to this church in Job, you are a mess. There is none like unto this church. There is none beside this church. Acts 13 1, let me not digress. I have already if you realize. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Serene and Manaen which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and so on as they ministered to the Lord and fasted as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said the Holy Ghost said. I'd like to at this point make this as an uh, as a warning. While we remain treating this topic, everybody must fast every Saturday. Because ministering unto the Lord takes fasting. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted. So we will fast every Saturday and come to minister to the Lord on Sundays. Am I made clear? That means that there will be meetings on Saturdays only to minister unto the Lord, to practice what we hear the previous or heard the previous Sunday. There's so much more to tell you that I can't tell you on Sundays only. I will have to tell you on Saturdays concerning ministering unto the Lord. 
this is the only church that comes to church every Saturday. I'll be every, every day of the week. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Every time people minister unto the Lord in fasting, the Holy Ghost always says, The Holy Ghost always says. Now, the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. The Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. Verse 19. This is the woman of Samaria by the well Sica, which is Jacob's well. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped, take note of that word, worshipped in this mountain. And you, the Jews, say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We worship what we, I mean, we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers, now that, that puts a blight on something there. You cannot have true until there is false. Can I get an amen somebody? You can't say he's tall until there is a short. If you take him in isolation, he's neither tall nor short. As soon as comparative terms are used, you know there is a distinguishing factor. I learned that in medicine. One of my professors used to tell us that when you hear anterior, that means there is a posterior. When, <laughs> when you hear a minor, that means there is a major. And so he he said that it just stick to me. I didn't know I was going to be using it in preaching. You don't say big until there is a small. You said the muscle is lying anterolateral to the cervical bone. Which means there is a muscle lying posterolateral to the same bone. That's why this one has the distinguishing mark of anterolateral. And that should be, I mean, if it bamboozes you, praise the Lord, that tells you something. Verse 23, please. But the hour comes, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Ministering unto the Lord. Listen, let me make a big statement here. Christianity, true Christianity, is a spiritual thing. Somebody says, do you go to that spiritual church? And you say, no. I don't go to that spiritual church. You are lying. This is a spiritual church. 
Because if it is not spiritual, it will be carnal. It is not spiritual as in Jerobo and Glorogui. Now, I was praying in the spirit. I believe this would be around 1982-83. And the Lord said to me, uh, you know many people when they come to church and you say the Lord said to me, they, they grow some kind of fearful. Oh, the Lord, God talks to him. I thought God stopped talking to him. Since he talked to the apostles, you're joking. If God doesn't speak to you on a daily basis, you are dead. Are you hearing me? Every day he must talk to you. He talks to me morning, afternoon, evening, night. Every time. The Lord is real. One thing you will learn about me is I never say the Lord said if he didn't say. Because I'm not about to buy you by tagging the Lord to it. You are too costly to be bought like that. Somebody wants to marry you, he doesn't know what to say. He said, the Lord said to me in a dream. Tell him, the Lord said to me in a dream, I shouldn't marry you. If he, yeah, he, if somebody said the Lord told me to marry you, and you don't tell him the Lord told me to, not to marry you. Then the Lord must be a confused Lord. You know, you like to hear some stories, don't you? Yes, this happened in University of Ife. At that time, the Holy Spirit baptism had just arrived in Nigeria. And there was, there was this group of, uh, you know, Christians. You know, that time if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you, you go into a seclusion. I mean, uh, you form your own small, you know, group. You don't fellowship with the main body. You are, you, I mean, you, you are now in a high, higher class. So about seven of them were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they, they, they were praying together. Every, every time they would meet together, share the Bible and pray. Not knowing that one brother there liked one sister. Instead of him to say, sister, I like you. I tell you, I like you. You agree with Mary. That would have been easy. I mean, it will give the sister opportunity to say yes or no, because she knows it is you. Brother, even if the Lord tells you, don't say the Lord tell me. Say, I like you. If it is the Lord, she will answer yes. See, now you can tell her how the Lord told you. Don't try to buy her off by the Lord. Then after you marry, she discovers it is not the Lord, it is the devil. So as they were praying, this brother got up and said da -da 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 -da, something like that. And you know in those days they didn't have control of their spirit. They, they tried to put, they put a lot of flesh to it. So you know, they tried to speak like God and they don't know God doesn't talk like that. And he said, just says the Lord. The brother and he mentioned his name. You shall marry sister and he mentioned her name. And the sister got I like that sister, she's smart. She got up and da 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 da, -da and said, Thus says the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she said, Sister so and so will not marry brother so and so. She mentioned his name. And the brother got up. And he began to chase her, you know, they, they formed a circle. And said, the Lord said it's you. She said, the Lord said it's not you. And they went round and round. Now that's... <laughs> it would have been a laughing matter if it were not so pathetic, you know. As soon as anything in Christianity loses its spiritual content, it becomes ritual and mysticism. If you are giving offering and you need you, you give offering without the spirit of offering, you are just performing a ritual and you are acting in mysticism. 
and it's a cause. Baptism must be done in the spirit of it. Prayer must be done in the spirit of it. Vows must be done in the spirit of it. Holy communion must be done in the spirit of it. Everything must be done in the spirit of it. As soon as it uses the spiritual content, it becomes ritualism and mysticism. It becomes dry and there is no power with it. When I began to discover that, I began to baptize people in water with the spirit of it. And every time I've gone to baptize it, if I'm baptizing 40 people, hardly will two come out of the water on their feet. Always, like it happened to Jesus, the Holy Ghost will come down. They will be slain in the spirit. Somebody needs to take them out of the water. And whatever sickness they have, they leave it under the water and come out spirit. Because it's a resurrection. When I give Holy Communion, people get healed. People get slain. And people bring prophecies. Words of God. We're going to see that this morning. That, that, that is why this church is peculiar. Because everything is done in the spirit of it. And there is no dryness to this church. Every part of it is alive. And we sing choruses and we're praising God. The, the rapture of life in it makes you not to be able to sit down. Even if you are a newcomer, you just must learn to, to rock it <laughs> together with us. When we come to worship, even if you are a bishop, because we do it in the spirit of it, you will kneel down yourself. Nobody will tell you, oh, you life flat. We come to give offering, we give it in the spirit of it. Hallelujah. As soon as Christianity or any act in Christianity loses its spiritual content. It becomes ritualism and mysticism. Now, we're talking about worship or ministering unto the Lord. So we've got to do it in the spirit of it. Take note. God said to the children of Israel after that had gone to Mount Sinai, where he saw the burning bush. And he came down, he came down with the tablet of stone, written on it the, the ten laws, ten commandments. And the first commandment is, Thou shalt not worship other gods before me. God is a proud God. He is a boastful God. It's because he knows himself. It's because he knows he, he is unchallengeable. He is, he is the big one. And he makes no light of his position. I like him. He, he's my father, man. I like that stuff. Ooh, hallelujah. I mean, no be not kind of person will stand before him and say, I am God too. He'll tell you that you are not. He put his feet on your head and squeezed you into powder. That's my father. He said, I don't take second class. I'm not a second rated being. I'm number one. When Paul was writing about Jesus, he said that he might have preeminence in all things. Preeminence means first place. First place. Matthew writing down what Jesus said with his own mouth. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God is not a second thing. He is first class. Great A. The man knows himself and he braggadociously spreads himself around. He goes unchallenged. He doesn't care about anything. He just states the facts as they are. I am number one. And I must treat that number one. I don't, don't ever make mistake of putting me second. Anything you put before God becomes a God to you. Whether it's a girl or it's a boy. Whether it's clothing. 
for money or a house or a car or is a stone or a tree might be a river might not be something visible might be some form of doctrine or culture or tradition when God takes first place my, 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 my brethren he means what he's saying you will not do anything other than what I say I mean he just knows how to spread himself I tell you I just like him I love him he doesn't give you room to choose he said I am God you shall not make any graven image of anything in heaven on earth or underneath the earth and fall down and bow before that thing he said don't don't do it don't do it because they have no power to save you to isaiah god revealed himself isaiah was a man he was a prophet from his mother's womb but when he came, he didn't know how to do his prophetic office in love. So he came with curses. Woe unto you. Woe unto the judges. And woe unto the policemen. And woe unto husbands. One day, God decided to show up. I like God. If, he just, if God wants to bamboozle you, he just shows up. He won't say one word. He just appears his appearance alone is enough to knock you down one day i isaiah saw god appear he didn't say what he just appeared and isaiah said woe to me for i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell among them. look when you are pronouncing woe would you take time So after that, Isaiah had that experience. God now began to deal with him. And God one day began to boast. He said, no nation has ever forsaken our God. Even the Egyptians have not forgotten the Egyptian, uh, 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 is it Mamo or whatever. And he said, the Assyrians and, and the Babylonians still hold to their God. But my people have gone a wood he said, there is no God but me. He said, even those that you consider to be God, are they God? If they are God, let them say the former things that have passed. If they are God, let them say of the present things. Or if they are God, let them talk about the future that is unknown. He said, no one can do it but me. I am God. He said, you go to idol. They have hands, but they cannot move them. Eyes, they don't see mouth they cannot talk they have ears all your supplications do not get to them he said but ah hallelujah i mean when you hear him say ah just watch it i mean i i can just see god in my mind when he say ah, he just spreads all his garment of light he says but look i i am god hallelujah to be worshipped. He is to be feared and served. And so God said to them, don't make anything and, and worship that thing. Don't bow before anything. Don't bow before anything. He said, you will bow before me. It's only me. That's why, that's why in this church, when it comes to worship, we bow. To bow doesn't mean to kneel. I hope you know there are two different words. They are not spelled the same and they don't mean the same. Some people think when we say thou art worthy, then they kneel down. He said, bow. Bow has in it the connotation of obedience, prostration, falling upon your face. I hope you are getting all that. 
Because I'm a dictionary, a living one. Somebody says, but I came to church with my costly glory. Oh my God, perish with your glory. Before God, you wash, you prostrate, you bow, you make obeisance, you fall on your face. I tell you, anybody who has ever seen God fell. The, the, the story of Ezekiel is, is more pathetic. Ezekiel saw God in the wheel. And he said, when I saw him, I fell on my face. And he reached out his hand and raised me up. He didn't say, I got up. God raised him. He was even falling when he was standing. And when God finished talking with him, he fell again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, that's God. When John, the apostle, saw Jesus Christ, he said, I fell. And he raised me up and began to speak to me. I believe after they finished, he fell again. When the priests in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 were ministering unto the Lord, ministering unto the Lord, when they were ministering unto the Lord, the Bible said the ministers could not stand to minister. That means that they fell. I like Jesus. I mean, Jesus is my man. Go any time of the day. Boy, I mean, that guy is something else. They came to arrest him, soldiers armed with, with, with command, and they came, he's just finished talking, he's just finished ministering to the Father. And they, they came, and he came out with the twelve behind him, eleven actually, because one rascal had gone. I hope you are not that kind. And Jesus, I mean, boy, I, I like, I honestly, I, I, there are some steps I think Jesus used. I, and I feel like copying him. I, I can see him just tell the eleven, please can you hang up here, I, I want to talk to those rascals. Uh, and he, he, he paces, you see, he's, he's come out with the glory. So he paces up front there and he stops and, and he poses. And he says, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He just did. I am he. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, he just, he just said it, he said it without any remorse, no, no feeling of inferiority. He said, I am he. And when he said it, the Bible said they went backwards and fell. That is God. When he shows up, when he shows up, everything gives way. Why? Because he is the center that holds everything. Hallelujah. I mean, you talk about this God and you say you won't bow before him? God said, you bow before me. Only me. Only me. Bow before me. Praise God. Now, let me quickly surmise and next week we pick it up from here. Worship must be done in the spirit. It is not a physical thing, it is a spiritual thing. Please don't be like the primary school boy who said master told him, sit down. He said to the headmaster, I'm not sitting down. Headmaster says, sit down. He said, sir, I am not sitting down. Headmaster says, sit down. Then he grumbled, he murmured, and he sat down. And then he said inside him, even though I'm sitting down, I'm standing up. There are people who have that kind of attitude when they come to worship. Even though they have done obeisance, yet they are standing. Such people are the ones that are quick. As soon as they get up, before anybody sees them, they begin to clean the dust. It is the mark a Muslim carries on his forehead that tells you he has gone to the mosque. They like to make a shana. So also those people across the street. When it is Ash Wednesday, everybody carries the ash. And he will intentionally talk to you and bring it low so that you can see it well. 
I went to church today, Ash Wednesday. It is a spiritual thing. Worship is a spiritual thing. And it carries with it a spiritual attitude. It's not physical. But you see, worship, if it is done in the spirit, remember your spirit is the one that is carrying your body. Your body doesn't carry your spirit. Are you hearing me? Think well. Your spirit carries your body. Your body doesn't carry on. The moment your spirit gets out, your body will drop like a cloth. And you are dead. So it's your spirit that is upholding your body. Therefore, when your spirit bows, your body will bow. Paul puts it in a very nice way in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. King James says, which is your, your reasonable service. Uh -uh. Amplified says, which is your spiritual worship. So not allowing sin into this body is a spiritual worship acceptable unto God. Not allowing some 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 puffings of secret inside is spiritual worship. Keeping this body as the temple of God holy is acceptable unto God as a spiritual worship. And the renewing of the mind to only think the word of God is also a spiritual worship. So worship has to do with spirit, soul, and body. There are too many people that come to worship God with a very Yankee body. You know what I mean? They've committed all kinds of atrocities in this body. And now they come to church and they say, Father, thank you. No, 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 that's, that's, that's nonsensical rubbish. Keep the body holy. Keep the body holy. The body is not yours. It is God's. Therefore glorify God in the body. The Bible says that no, you know, he that will destroy this body, him the Lord will also destroy. Worship. When you come to worship God, you don't ask for nothing. When you are ministering unto the Lord, it's not time for asking. It's not time for complaining. It's not time. When you come to minister to the Lord, when you come to worship, it is time to recognize God as God. Have you ever watched the Olokun worshippers? Right? When they dress in their white with chalk everywhere on their body, go to Lagos and by the lagoon. When they come to worship Olokun, they don't, that's not the time to make requests. That is the time to, see, to make any kind of remark that makes Olokun high, and Olo, Olokun is nothing. Olokun is nothing. It's just a demon hanging somewhere, deceiving people. My younger brother Panam said, a God is known by his worshippers. If there are no worshippers, there, there cannot be a God. He said, and I'm there to uh, use him as, use his illustration. He said, this thing is not a God now, because nobody is worshipping him, this, this plank. But as soon as two, three people begin to bow to this thing, it automatically becomes a God. So the worshippers make the God. You cannot have God without worshippers. If we truly have a God, then we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And when we begin to worship God, let me go a little bit deep and we'll stop. 
we get to a point you see many christians have a union with god not a unity koinonia which is the greek word used in second corinthians 13 14 he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the father and the fellowship the greek word used is koinonia koinonia the fellowship of the holy spirit koinonia aginimutus the fellowship of the holy spirit one of the meaning of koinonia says it is unity when you and god have amalgamated and have infused into one another so that there is no separation between you and him know ye not that he that is joined to the lord is one spirit now the joining brethren is is experiential in worship can be experienced in worship my god there was a day i was worshiping the lord here in in 1988 may in hill station and people I, I think i was the only one wild one in the whole bunch we came for prayer fire conference and i was amazed that the ministers don't know how to worship god ministers themselves up till today in, in this city they don't know what is worship they worship god standing like straws of corn or iroko trees and sometimes when it is time for worship some people think they are the god and so, so they sit down across their leg he is lord you would have changed the song to say i am lord how can you see it in worshiping god i like what shambach said he said i'm going to remove all the pews from church so that when we are going to worship god everybody falls down this these pews are making people think they are some god sit down cross your leg hey he is lord and they say, well, we lifted up holy hand. Your down hand is sinful. Sitting down to worship God. I, I, like, I like the Muslims at this point. They don't have a chair in their mosque. So when it is time to hit that head on the floor, nobody complains that the chair in my front was my, my obstruction. This church has enough space. If we get to worship, and somebody you are in the center there if they don't want to get a give, take excuse come to the aisle and fall down if there is no space fall on the next person it is worship nevertheless we're talking about worship giving reverence to god it brings you into unity with god Every time people have worshipped God, God has moved dramatically on their behalf. John 9 31 says, We know that no we know that God heareth not sinners. But if a man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him the Lord heareth. If a man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will. One man in Mina, having seen me minister so many times, he called me to his office and gave me a cup of tea. I didn't know he called me just to disgrace himself. And he said, Philip, you are an enigma. At that time, I didn't know what the word enigma meant. I have read this several times. I didn't care to check. When he said you are an enigma, when I left that meeting, I quickly went to my dictionary and checked the word enigma. Enigma means mystery. He said, I am a mystery. At, at the moment, I was going to be get, I mean, I was going to get concerned because I said, only God is mysterious. But later I found out that, true, I am a mystery. 
Because John 3, 8 says, Everyone that is born of God is like a wind. No man knows from where he's coming. No man knows where he's going. He must be a mystery. And he said, When I look at you, I think I live a better life than you. There are so many accusations about your life. They say you do this, you do that, you do that, you do that. But again, I can't understand why God will be using you like this. You pray for the sick, they get healed. You lay hands on people, they fall. You do this, God does it. He said, I don't know. And to be very honest, at that time I didn't know. So that forced me to begin to study until I came across John 9, 31. If a man be a worshiper and do it his will. Because I can spend two hours worshiping God in my room. And that's what every one of you ought to learn. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's so difficult to pray. In our house, we wake up 5.30 to pray. This morning, I scolded everybody in the house because they wouldn't come out. 5.30 prayer is heavy for them, including the pastors. When I wake up in the morning, I have problem with this body. At 5.30, this body still wants some sleep. So when I come to pray, and you pray, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when somebody like Kule begins to, Babruska, Babruska, you wake up again and you say, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, in our house, we are about 12. Now, so what I do, this body can drag you into fleshly worship, and then you won't be a true worshiper. So I tell my body, I will put you on the hunger. We will see who will win. You say you want to sleep, you won't sleep. You must worship God. So I kneel down. And I put up my hand. And I go, Mahalabara, Mahalabara Liga, Hokalabra Ligia Babona Nuana Manaya, Hesibre Ligia, Manda. You can't sleep with hand on. <laughs> All right? So my hand gets tired. And he, my body is begging, please bring me down. I want to rest in a light. You must worship God. Mangaya Basala Bralea. When it is coming down, I remember it's coming down. Push it up. Ma, I punish my body. At the time, my body now begins to agree. He says, I consent. Now we will worship God. At that time, I bring it down and I put myself on the floor. He is not going to sleep. If he tries to sleep, I go back to kneeling down and raising up my hand again. I must punish this body. I must bring it under subjection. It is that I preach the gospel and people get saved and I become a castaway. I refuse to be a castaway. We are not of them that draw back onto partition. So I learned the hard way. I learned Kenneth Copeland wanted to read the Bible every morning. And when he wake up to read, it's so difficult to read. You know, that's Jerry Sabel. When, when he reads, he begin to fall, feel, feel sleepy. Before he will realize, his wife is tapping him that it's time to go to office. So one day he said, this devil is cheating me. He said, buddy, you will read Bible. You will eat Bible. So what he does, he looked for the most inconvenient position in his house. He couldn't get one. Finally, he got his bathtub. You know bathtub? The bath you use for bathing. So he went and climbed the edge, that narrow edge, and stood with the Bible and held it. He said, buddy, if you like, sleep. Because if you sleep from here, you know where you will go. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. We must design ways to tell the devil we mean business with God. We must design ways. Somebody say, I don't know, if I sit down, I fall asleep. Put pins under your seat, so that when you sit down, they prick you. Put them in such a way that, you know when you sleep, when sleep comes, your body feels heavier. Good. So put it in such a way that when the body gets heavier, they will prick you, you will come up. You must, you must, you must learn to do it. Jesus said, couldn't you tarry with me for one hour? 
I wish we knew the position Jesus had when he prayed. But I think it was uncomfortable and that kept him awake. Now you would understand, I, there, there is no reason why these people should sleep. Jesus had just gone to Jerusalem, done perform miracle, dri driven people away from the temple and so on. He went back to Bethany, he couldn't sleep, he went to the mountain to pray. The next day they went back to Jerusalem, he did some things and so on and so forth. And then he went to get many to pray. The disciples were just following, they had enough time to rest. And when they came to pray, Jesus who should have been sleeping was awake. They who should have been praying were asleep. Worshiping the Lord, brethren, is a spiritual act. Somebody said, but I don't know it. Begin, first of all, be a determined person to worship God. When I started, I didn't start by worshiping God completely in a straight way. No, it was a struggle. But I had to give my flesh real work to do. Now I know how to worship God. Praise the Lord. If you are blessed, give the Lord praise.